Hi everyone, it's Steffi from The Novelty Corner and welcome back to my channel and welcome to Vlogmas Day 15 and welcome to another bookshelf tour. We are on the home stretch. I was originally intending to film all three romance bookshelves all together and then I realised how many books were actually on each individual shelf and then thought that that would be a really long video and also really tough to edit. So I am splitting it into one shelf at a time, which is what I've been doing for the whole series. So the next three bookshelf tours will be my romance shelves and then that's it guys, that's my bookshelves. I'm going to continue the same format, I'm going to cut to an overview of the shelf and show you what it looks like, what's on it, and then I'm going to pull the books off the shelf and talk to you about them. Here we go with the first of my romance shelves. So really I think I may have mentioned that these shelves are romance plus some urban fantasy with romantic leanings and paranormal romance and all that sort of stuff. So that's the overview of the books. You'll see I have another Druid family, these are by Pete Cromer, these are the dice that I bought that I recently showed in a vlog and then over here this is another Pete Cromer artwork I have all of these mugs and I have some of the coasters the flask is from a bay crate box and the urban fantasy keyring is from novel menagerie and I have a few of her keyrings I have the science fiction one definitely and I also have the romance one which is on a different shelf but let's pull all these books off the shelf now and I'll talk to you about them now that you've seen the overview let's start talking about the books like the rest of my shelves, these are basically in alphabetical order by author's surname. I just prefer that method of shelving books. I know the rainbow looks really nice. I prefer alphabetical order. It's just the way my brain works. The first book on my shelf is The Bromance Book Club by Lisa K. Adams. I do actually have books two and three. I just have not yet read them and so they're not on the shelf yet. So I only keep books that I've read on my actual bookshelves. I have a TBR cart that has my unread physical copies elsewhere. I really enjoyed the Bromance Book Club. It is about Gavin whose marriage is in trouble and so his friends recruit him to their book club where they read different romance books in order to try and figure out their issues and troubles with women. And in this particular book Gavin ends up reading a historical romance and it's adorably hilarious. And then I have Conventionally Yours by Annabeth Elbert. This came in a Bay Crate box. I do really like Annabeth Elbert's books. This one is not my favourite of hers though, but it did come in a box, so that's why I have it. My favourite of her series, I think, is the Out of Uniform series. This one is a male male romance. It is more new adult than perhaps adult. It follows Conrad and Eldon as they road trip across the country to a convention that they are attending. They start off as not quite enemies, but more sort of frenemies and then it becomes a frenemies to lovers sort of story. Then we have the start of my Alona Andrews collection. So this is the Kate Daniel series. Book one is Magic Bites. Book two is Magic Burns. Magic Strikes. Magic Bleeds. Magic Slays. Magic Rises. Magic Breaks. Magic Shifts. Magic Binds. And Magic Triumphs is the last official book in the Kate Daniel series. And then there is Gunmetal Magic, which follows Andrew, who is the best friend of the main character, Kate Daniel. And it's her story. And this is about 4.5 or 5.5. I forget where it fits in, but it's her story and it takes place parallel to the main narrative. So the Kate Daniel series is an urban fantasy slash paranormal romance series featuring a world that is split into periods of high magic and also periods of no magic and this causes havoc on technology and also people who do have access to magic because depending on whether the magic is on or off depends on the capabilities of the world and the people within it. Kate works for an organization that basically helps to maintain the peace and keep track of all of the magical creatures that rise when the magic is high and she ends up entangled or with the local pack particularly the pack's leader Curran who is a lion shifter and the whole thing is fantastic. If you haven't read it, it's great. The romance sort of kicks off around book two, book three, rather than in the first book. So the first book is a lot of world building. And if you can get through that and then start on book two, then you're good. And then the other Alona Andrews series that I have is part of the Hidden Legacies series. So I have books 3.5, 4 and 5, which is where Catalina Baylor's story kicks off. So the first one we have is Diamond Fire. This is the novella that's 3.5. Sapphire Flames, which is book four. And Emerald Blaze, which is book five. And this was the 2020 release. This again is very similar to Kate Daniels. We have a world that resembles ours, but with magic. You have these ruling families who have a lot of magical power and they basically rule and they have a lot of infighting and little sort of territory wars going on between the different families. In the first three books you have Nevada who is the oldest of the Baylor sisters. It's her story as she crosses paths with Mad Rogan who is a very powerful telekinetic and the two end up embroiled in sort of this magical warfare sort of situation. At the end of the first three books which is Nevada's arc we kick off with Catalina's arc and I just adore her. She is the second oldest of the Baylor sisters and just a delight. Her love interest is Alessandro who 
it's hilarious. Moving right along, we have my Tessa Bailey books. This is the Hot and Hammered trilogy. Book one is Fixer Up, which is the story of Georgie, who is a professional clown, and Travis Ford, who was a successful baseball player, I think, until he was injured and basically he can't play anymore. And the two have a fake dating to real dating sort of relationship going on. There is Love Her or Lose Her, which was a second chance romance featuring a married couple. And then there is Tools of Engagement, which I think was my favorite of the trilogy. And this features Bethany, who is Georgie's older sister. And it's an age gap romance between her and Wes as they flip a house. And it was great. I have two books by Juliet Cross in the Stay a Spell series. So there is Wolf Gone Wild, which is book one, and Don't Hex and Drive. I've talked about these a lot recently, so I won't talk too much about them. They are paranormal romance books with a romantic comedy feel, and they are highly delightful. I, I strongly suggest you check them out because they are so much fun. They feature witches and shifters and vampires and probably other things. I just, I want more. I have four Tessa Dare books. The first one is Romancing the Duke. This was the very first Tessa Dare book that I read, and then I decided to pick up a physical copy of it for myself to celebrate that occasion. And then I have three books in the Girl Meets Duke series. So there is The Duchess Deal. The Governess Game, and The Warflower Wager. And these are all delightfully fun, and I really adore the way that Tessa Dare writes her stories, because I end up laughing quite a lot throughout them. I have two of Kristen Callahan's books. These are the first two books in the VRP series, so book one is Idle, and book two is Managed. These are rock star, famous people relationships. Idol is more of the rock star romance because you have the actual rock star from the series who is falling in love with someone he meets in a small town and then Manage which is my favourite of the series and features Gabriel Scott who is delightfully grumpy. This is a grumpy sunshine story and he is the manager of the band and he ends up falling in love with the social media manager for the band. I have The Roommate by Rosie Downer which is a 2020 release that had a lot of pipe surrounding it. I did really enjoy it. It is a story about Clara Wheaton who is a good girl but a socialite and she ends up moving across the country to move in with the guy that she has been in love with forever as his roommate only to find out when she gets to LA that he is going on tour with his band and he's found a different roommate for her. It is very sex positive, highly recommend you check it out. I have the first two books in the Well Met series by Jen DeLuca. So the first book is Well Met, which I absolutely adore. This is one of my favorite books and also Well Played, which I enjoyed, but I also have issues with upon reflection. So I still really like it, but I still have issues with it because of the way that the main love interest is pretending to be someone he's not for a significant portion of the book. But Well Made is great. They're all set in a renaissance fair and they're a lot of fun. I have Summer Skin by Kirsty Eager. This is an Australian new adult book set during college and it's very sex positive. It is very girl power. And I mean, just look at this cover. This cover is great. I have a copy of Beach Read by Emily Henry, which was also a 2020 release and a book that I really enjoyed. It does feature two rival authors who end up holidaying in neighboring beach houses on a lake. One is a literary fiction author, one is a romance author, and they set a bet for each other to swap genres. And they're going to see whose book can be published first as a competition. I have Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. This was really fun. I really enjoyed this one. This is a Mau Mau romance. I have The Beast of Beswick by Emily Howard. This is a historical romance, Beauty and the Beast retelling. Shades of Wicked by Janine Frost, which is Ian's story. And it was really funny and entertaining. It is a paranormal romance book featuring vampires. And finally, I have a copy of The Bridge Kim Kingdom by Daniel L. Jensen. This was a copy that I received in a bake crate box. So it is absolutely gorgeous. I've shown it before. It is a stunning, stunning book. There is artwork under the dust jacket. It is a fantasy romance series. I'm not sure I'm going to continue with it. I did enjoy it, but fantasy romance is not always my thing. But I'm keeping this book because it's beautiful and I hadn't read anything quite like it. All right, so that is everything on the first romance bookshelf. My shout out for today is Jessen from Jessen Reads Romance. I first found Jessen through the Smart Women Read Romance podcast that she hosts with her aunt. And then I found out she had a YouTube channel I think she's very thoughtful and she's very articulate. And recently she also shared a video on author and reviewer etiquette, which was a really important conversation to have because of a few events that happened on book Twitter in the past week. I thought she had some really good points that are, you know, very appropriate to be talked about and discussed on the way that reviewers and authors behave when interacting with one another and when it is appropriate and maybe when it's not. And she also has tons of recommendation videos. She does reading blogs featuring different types of romance books. So she's well worth checking out. I'll leave her link down below. Stay tuned tomorrow. I'm going to talk about the second romance bookshelf. If you have any questions or comments about the books that you saw on this shelf, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'm happy to talk to you about any of the books on there because I have read all of them. But in the meantime, I hope that wherever you are in the world, you are staying safe and healthy and I will see you very soon in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.